All right, it's 17.45 p.m. It is Sunday evening, and I got two movie reviews, plus some other videos to upload as well. So, uh, first up, A Quiet Place Part 2. I watched it this morning. Pretty good. Man, that day one flashback was intense. That was really good. That was good shit. It's been 474 days now. Damn. That crazy. Oh man, the sand path ends. I wondered about that. I really did. I wondered if that was, you know, mapped out throughout the whole area or did it have an end point to it? It's cute how they're carrying the baby in the chest. Yeah, that was adorable and smart. These rural these rural abandoned areas are scary because one day ghost towns are gonna be more prevalent. Literally. There's so many ghost towns in the US. And probably worldwide, that sooner or later, there ain't going to be much of a population left. <laughs> Ugh. No shit, someone set a trap. Fuck a bear trap! That was some crazy shit. Oh hell, Death Angel almost got him, but Emmett helped them. Who's playing Beyond the Sea for the last four months on the radio? I don't know. Somebody who likes Beyond the Sea. <laughs> Regan discovered that the signal is coming from an island and she wants to go. They really pick good choices in the kids because they look like their parents. Literally. What scene was that? Oh, when Regan and Marcus are in the boiler talking to each other. Like, you can see it in their faces. They look like Evelyn and Lee. Literally. It's amazing. Shit, Regan left out. My question is... How does this warrant a third film? Guess I'll find out. More on that later. Oh man, her poor feet. And then when they got to the train station, her feet weren't injured. <laughs> Little tiny mistake, but funny. It's a real quick scene, but it's there. Holy fuck, the train got torn apart. Yeah, exploring that damage was awesome. I did love that. Shit, Regan almost got killed, but Emmett saved her. Oh, the baby's so cute. I do like babies, but I really don't want no fucking kids. Yeah, my surrogate kid's bad enough. I already got her blocked. <laughs> oh, my. Shit, the oxygen tank is getting low. Oh, no. Emmett found a boat. Man, I thought he took off with her hearing aid. I really did. I was like, that motherfucker. And then my cynical side's like, God damn, that is smart. <laughs> but Regan leaving out like that, like, being deaf, that really does kind of fuck you over. Because, I mean, yeah, you got to keep your head on a swivel, obviously. But you can't hear what's coming. Or you'll, you'll feel the vibration, but not very much. Yeah, you'd have to be on a swivel. I mean, honestly, a deaf soldier would be... That motherfucker would have PTSD in battle every time. Because they would have their head on a fucking swivel 24-7. Because they can't hear. All they can do is see and feel. They can see, feel, smell, and taste shit. Everything, all that's heightened, but, yeah. Mm. What else was there? Oh, Evelyn going in search of medicine. Oh, she's going in search of medicine. Damn, Evelyn left her ring on the cross. That hurt. That was fucking heavy. That was rough. I almost didn't remember what happened in the first one, but then the flashbacks helped. And I was like, ah, now I remember. <laughs> Emmett and Regan are making a move for the boat. Evelyn's back in town. Marcus is exploring the upper floor of the factory. Ah, Emmett's flashlight is the same as Dino's. <laughs> yeah, Emmett's got the same flashlight my stepdad has. I recognized it. I was like, oh, yeah. Click. <laughs> oh, what just went past Emmett? Oh, good. Evelyn found supplies. Good. Now she can make some cookies. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Evan and Evelyn. Emmett and Regan got captured by a band of thieves. Marcus is locked in the boiler. Dude, that freaked me the fuck out when that door shut. I was like, yeah, asshole, forgot the towel. <sighs> <laughs> the, 
The Death Angel collapsed the entrance down below. That was wild. I love the Death Angel look. It's so beautiful. Uh, Emmett got the thieves killed. Evelyn is right beside the Death Angel. That, that was wild. Fuck. Regan saved Emmett. Evelyn got the oxygen tanks and meds back to Marcus and the baby. Regan and Marcus escaped the Death Angels to find a small community of lit houses. Oh, it's the community. <laughs> oh, man. Death Angels can't swim. That was interesting. For all their power and shit, they can't swim, but they are excellent leapers. Like, woof. Emmett admitting to Regan he's not as strong-willed like Lee is a big thing. Most guys can't admit their faults or shortcomings. I know a lot of dudes like that. They really can't. Me? I got no problem admitting my shortcomings. Shit, I have a lot of goddamn faults. Oof. And I, I try to confront them as they come by me. It's hard, but I do it. Pretty creepy he kept his wife's corpse upstairs, though. Yeah, that, well, I mean, I get that, but oof. That smell. <laughs> Shit, a death angel got to the community via the sea star boot. That was wild. Regan and Marcus both killed the death angels attacking them. That was pretty dope. Hmm, I like this, but don't really see how it warrants a third film. It just, it doesn't. Uh, good seeing Demon and surprise Michael Bay was involved. Yeah, that really did surprise the shit out of me. Um, very impressed with John Krasinski directing that. Like, hit that, the first one? Absolute masterpiece. I love that shit. But I think he got bit by the trilogy bug. <laughs> Definitely. Like, honestly, it could have just been a standalone film and, like, they're done. But, uh, this is tough. I thought it was going to recap how everyone survived and how Sand was discovered to get around. I know that sounds retarded, but, like, honestly, how they discover scan sand would help them get around. That's usually what sequel films do when doing flashbacks for world building. It's a rule of thumb. <laughs> but he didn't do that, so, well. Do I want a third film? Maybe. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Is there any evidence to make it? Kind of. Is it better than the first one? No. <laughs> Granted, it does show the aftermath outside of the farm, so that's a plus, but not really much else. Unless you factor in Emmett's whole origin, but even then, not enough. It's really not like you get all this shit, and where's the bat, where's the flashbacks? I really thought this was going to, you know, recap, well, obviously, show what happened to Evelyn and the kids. And whatever else was going to happen. That's what I thought. But then when I saw the title, I'm like, oh, so maybe it'll recap what happened that whole year. Because when it opens up, you get day one. I'm like, oh, okay. This is going to be a recap film. Nope. <laughs> and that's a bummer. It should have been a recap film. That would have helped. But, oh, well. Hmm. The Death Angel's design is still fascinating and does have a small homage to Grendel and Beowulf with its ear. Yeah, I like its echolocation setup. That's awesome. It was nice having caps on throughout the film. I love that shit. Oh. Fun fact. I have watched closed captioning since I was a kid. I'm not deaf at all. I can hear fine. I just prefer reading while I'm watching a show or a movie. It's easier and it's helped me build my vocabulary up need more films like this honestly yes hmm. christ i wish more theaters here had this but we don't unless there's some i don't know about because all we have is small ass devices with caps though those types of theaters do exist overseas yeah like my theater, they have assist, they have audio assisted devices, and that's it. And but I don't want to sit there holding some little device, looking at the screen, looking at those double screens. No, my girlfriend though, she went to a theater. Where was that? I think it was in India. 
India. Maybe it was India. I forget where. It was one country, but I'm thinking it was India. And they literally have uh, closed caps on the screen, but it's in multiple languages. So half the screen is caps and the other half is the movie. <laughs> but it's the, the movie is in the background and the caps take up half the screen. So, yeah, that's kind of annoying, but I would enjoy that. At least, do, if it, at least they're bilingual. That's helpful. <laughs> uh, I think that the sequel is good, but it didn't need to be made. Yeah, that's how I feel. I'd say it's about a 7 out of 10. Yeah. What would I like in the third film? Maybe flashbacks on how they survived would be nice, and hopefully a good end. I was really hoping for flashbacks. I like flashbacks. It's fun. The series is truly innovative, but I'd hate to see it devolve into multiple films like horror franchises have done in the past. Kind of glad I didn't see it in theaters. Uh, so that's A Quiet Place Part 2. Man, I don't want multiple fucking installments. I hate that shit. It worked in the past. Now it's just kind of a dated deal. It's not that fun anymore. That's why, like, comic book films are a very good example of this. Now they just on and on and on. That's why fans like me prefer standalone films. If you get a standalone origin story, that's fun. It's exciting. It's their film. It's not tied to anything. It's all about them. Whereas nowadays, it's, you know multiple installments, all these goddamn tie-ins, and it's like, nobody fucking cares. <laughs> it just gets, it's repetitive shit. It's repetitive, repetitive, recycle, recycle, recycle. And it's not original anymore. It's just recycled shit. Uh -huh. So, if you don't like John Krasinski, if you don't like this film, you don't like the cash, you don't like anybody in this fucking thing, it ain't for your ass. But if you do enjoy this kind of horror and how it's innovative and fun and, you know, a revamp of the genre, you'll enjoy this, for sure. But, you know, it's your choice. You can watch it if you want to. Um, ow. <laughs> Where are my scissors? Ah, oh, they're beside me. Good. I'm going to scratch my back. Um, I'll be back with the next review. Stay tuned.